Telescopes are becoming uh, more difficult to get. As the COVID rages across the globe and death toll unfortunately rises, uh, the deliveries are delayed and Chinese manufacturers who actually are the factories of the world, uh, they cannot cope with the demand. People are staying in homes. They need telescopes. They've been some past time. Many people go for the old uh, uh, love of their childhood. That's its telescopes and astronomy. They want a telescope and uh, uh, until they build new factories to new plants to build this or increase the capacity of the current ones, uh, there is a shortage of telescopes. So the best option now is to go for secondhand telescopes. And that is what we have done here. I've got a the Skull Watcher Heritage Telescope. Five inch Dobsonian mount flex tube. Let's open and see what is inside this. This was uh, built for the anniversary of 2009, this astronomy, International Year of Astronomy. I don't think that is that old, but anyway, the box is that. The person who sold it to me included some additional stuff. Oh, heat flex, heat. Flexi heat dew shield, Ostrozap. Oh, that's lovely. That also can be used as a blocking thing for the flex tube itself. Okay, let's put this Ostrozap aside. It has a connector, so it can be connected to the 12 volt battery. Let's open to this. Okay, this is the packaging. More packaging. Hmm. Let's see what is this one inside. Oh, we have some eyepieces here. Super 25 wide angle long eye relief eyepiece. So. These are basic, but they're adequate, good. There's more here. Oh, okay. Yeah. <coughs> Bolt case for that eyepiece. Uh, 10 millimeter super wide angle eyepiece. Standard for the Sky Watcher. Find to open this zip back. Okay, now oh. a finder scope. And a lovely Barlow, three times Barlow. So let them put back in the bag that they came with. I'm putting them back where they come in the box. Nice. <coughs> now the main pistol resistance. Oh, oh that's a compulsory thing. Sky Watcher. Warning for not looking at the sun. So that's really good. It's almost new. It has its uh, label. And that's the actual telescope. It has been in the cold for a this snowy day today. And so it's a little dude now when I brought it to this warm home. That's lovely, look at it. What else we have here? Oh, it doesn't need this one, but uh, kindly the seller has given me one of these trays for a tripod. <coughs> nice. So let me take this out. Okay, I've brought the telescope out. 
something inside here. Oh, that's lovely. That's the uh, oldest car watcher series. Hmm. What do I have in this uh, sets? Um, that's interesting. I have the 10 inch and I have the 12 inch. And I have this uh, 8 inch one also. I don't have any of the, Oh, I have this uh, Maxitoff, which is the 151. Oh, they don't. 180, 127. Okay, 150 one I have, but they don't have it here. And of these ones, I think. Uh, I have this one, but the. Uh, <coughs> The version which is the Italian one, uh, the orange tube ones, and uh, I have this also. Not, uh, I don't have this one. Um, I have this one, which is the old one, of course. I have. Anyway, that's interesting. Mounts and oh, these are really top notch, but difficult to use because you have to have a proper area for moving it in and out better to have it in observatory anyway nice to have this catalog for sure so that's a telescope let's bring it toward me and see how it is it looks almost new you have to loosen these bolts here and we can rise it Ooh, hallelujah I have to have three hands to it now I have to uh, hold the camera in one hand, hold this, then uh, tighten this bolt. I will do it now with cutting the video. You must have seen one of my videos that is in the telescope shop. Uh, I am, and I installed one of these in the telescope shop on a <coughs> AZ mount of the Sky Watcher, the the one which has a which you can use it with a Wi-Fi. So. Oh, this Topsonia mount of it is lovely. I have one of this, just one of this, and the mount is very versatile. I used it very heavy telescopes on it. Anything up to six inch I've used on that. Six inch uh, Maxitov and six inch uh, refractor. Amazing beauty. So I have to push this uh, dovetail into this so the telescope will be balanced at the moment is the tail heavy and the head is light so let me do that okay now i have balanced it and it can be put in any position i wish that this part could be rotated that would have been make it really easy in any position you could use it all the telescopes should have such a thing now look the eyepiece in that direction so for solution uh, to have this like that, you have to turn the base and then you will be directed in the right direction. The mist you see is because this room is warmer than outside and the mist has formed. When it was delivered, it was cold. Now, let me see what is in the back of it. Oh yeah, I can see. Telescope, diameter 130. Uh, focal length 650, so 13600. I think this is around F7 uh, or F. Just the F ratio is div uh, focal length 650 millimeter divided by diameter of the mirror 130 millimeter. Mean, uh, it gives a five number five. So the F ratio is five. That's quite a fast telescope. And I like that it has actually this uh, uh, ring, this uh, screws for adjusting the collimation. Really nice touch. So this telescope can be collimated. I had, I had it one and a uh, yeah two inch refractor, uh, Newtonian Gilbert one, and that was amazing because you could actually <laughs> do also the modification of the. Collimation you could do on that little one. The only weak point on that was the eyepiece, which uh, I replaced with the Japanese fast and sweet, bright and swift uh, telescope. Okay, look. This is a mist in the mirror. 
but I can open that and just clean the mirror. Hmm. This diameter of the fog is gradually increasing as the temperature gets uh, adapted to it. So let's just attach the eyepiece and see how it is. This is the 25mm eyepiece I'm going to use, Super 5, 25, and it has nice screws to remove the cap. how you can actually adjust this is it oh this is twisty one you have to twist it for adjustment yeah. <laughs> yeah, they could have put a rack and pinion or clay foot so it is just you have to turn it to bring it into focus okay let me just put the eyepiece in I have to loosen this screws a little bit more encouragement so now the eyepiece goes easily in and it's adjusted by turning this yeah it was a bit stiff because the threads were misplaced so now that is uh, free and can I just a bit awkward but anyway you have to get used to it I suppose you can put a, your own adapter here and adjust it by the or you can move this back and forth if you want that would work also hmm anyway let's see if I can find okay let's see how it is the view uh, I'm looking at some birds in the apple tree so this is a wood pigeon sitting on the apple tree Bramley apple tree Let's see if I change the eyepiece to something a little bit more substantial, what, what difference it makes. So that was a view to the uh, Skywatcher Super 25 wide angle long eye relief eyepiece. Now let, uh, let's see through the Edmond Scientific 28mm eyepiece. And this is the Edmond Scientific 28mm uh, plus hole can see the difference is much better uh, this is superior to that one just for starting you up so I'll give you some eyepiece to work but this one is better our pigeon is almost sleepy puffing up and that was the view to the at most scientific 28 millimeter fossil Okay, let's go to extreme, get mad, instead of this super 25 cheapest or this Airborne Scientific 28mm puzzle, go for the Teleview Panoptic 24mm. The price of it is double the price of the telescope. <laughs> Just see let's see how is the view through the Teleview Panoptic. And that was the view through the Teleview Panoptic 24mm. I felt the view through the most scientific was brighter and uh, more in focus. Probably I had difficulty focusing this because I had to pull it really back with the Panoptic. But this was easy. And these are the pigeons you can see on that tree. They're around, uh, yeah, let me tell you. 
and 40 meter away. 35 to 40 meters. 40 meters. Now I'm packing it up. Let's just push this. Mm, nice feeling. And put the cap on. Nice cap. And when it is unpacked, that's the volume it takes. Not much bigger than an Astroscan, but uh, we have one inch bigger in the mirror. And it can be even made smaller by putting it like that. Uh, I think it's around 40 centimeter high or half a meter. Yeah, that's all with a with a tripod with the Dobsonian mount. That's it, half a meter. And it's best for carrying with you if you are going. You know, you can take it to a dark side with you easily. It's hassle-free. You can just set it up quickly without missing any of the action. Clouds coming and going. You just can unpack and pack. It's perfect for travel. It's lovely. It's not second hand, it's like new. Not been used much, probably, at all. But for using it comfortably, you need a, something like this. Five pound uh, cabinet from Aldi. So you can put it on top of it and just use it as a stand. It works perfect. My overall impression is that this is a hassle-free, easy-to-use telescope and compact. The next best thing is to have an Astroscan, which is, uh, is rare now, or use one of those uh, Skywatch Infinity 76 Penguin, Blue Penguin.